If you are building your file along with me as I work through this course, you can simply keep that same company file open as we work. If you're just joining in, if you didn't follow all of the steps from the previous chapters, or if you simply want to start each chapter with a fresh file, you need to use a company file from the Project Files folder located on your desktop. The Project Files are actually backup files for my working file. They simply need to be restored in order for you to be able to use them. Go to the File menu, choose Restore, and work through the wizard to choose the backup from the file folder that you're going to be choosing from the desktop. We've already worked with our GL accounts in prior chapters, so let's go ahead and go right into our default information. This actually is going to be from the Maintain menu, down to our default information, and then we have a couple different places we want to take a look at. Let's start with Vendors. Now, of course, vendors are the people who sell us stuff. Don't forget that it could also be contractors. So sometimes we have vendors who sell us product. Maybe they could be large companies. But if you have someone who is not an employee, they should also be set as a vendor because you're going to be writing checks to them for their services. The tabs here make a little bit of sense, but let's go ahead and take a look at what some of them are. These, remember, are going to be our defaults when we create a new vendor. So they can always be customized when we create the vendor itself. If you have generic payment terms, then you can go ahead and set those. For example, do you usually pay things cash on delivery, or are they prepaid? Or do you have net terms, like things are due in 30 or 45 days? All of these can be set right from the left-hand side. We hope that you don't do prepaid, and the only reason for that is, yes, you don't have any debt, but remember that that also kind of puts a crimp in your cash flow. You will have already paid for items regardless of whether you sell them or how long it takes you to sell them. If you say that it is usually due in a number of days, a typical term is net due in 30 days. You also can put if you are typically getting a discount. So sometimes it's due in 30, but if you pay in 10 days, you get maybe 2 or 3% off. Remember that all of these are the default, including a credit limit. This tells you at the bottom what our accounts are that are going to be linked by default to each of our vendors. Right now, we have an expense account and a discount account. The expense account is currently undefined. That means for each vendor, I'm going to have to choose which area that particular service or product needs to be expensed to. On the other hand, we usually only have one purchase discount. So this again it takes care of the accounting. If I purchase something for $100, but I got a discount and only had to pay $97, I need to keep track of where that other amount is going to. Let's move on to a couple other tabs. We have account aging. Basically, when you're talking about how old your account is with a vendor, do you want that based on the date the invoice was sent or the date the invoice was due? So if I purchase some products in January and the invoice is dated January 15th, but I have net 30, so it's not due until February 15th, when I come to the end of January, do I want that to be that it's still 15 days until it's due or that it's 15 days past due? You see how this can work on your behalf. It just needs to be consistent. You then have some categories. Usually they're 0 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and over 90 days. But of course, you can customize that as well. In some industries, for example, ski industries, they may have some different aging because often they're ordering products at the end of the prior season or during the summer, but vendors know that they're not going to be making money until winter hits. So again, this can be customized. This will probably be okay for most of you. We can create custom fields for virtually anything that we work with in Peachtree, and the last tab is about 1099s. Remember that you have to send a 1099 form to someone who is not a corporation, but someone to whom you pay more than $600 in a year. So these are your contractors. And this is basically just showing you which boxes on the 1099 your different GL accounts are going to be posted to. With that, we'll go ahead and get out of this box and take a look at another one. Let me go ahead and click Cancel. And the second default that we want to take a look at is going to be for our inventory. We'll start the same way. We'll go up to Maintain, down to Default Information, and this time we want to choose Inventory Items. Similarly to the vendors, we have different types of tabs. Do you want to allow duplicate values in your UPC codes? Well, if you're not using pre-manufactured and commercially packaged products, you're probably not going to have UPC, but you could. This would be the place if you wanted to have duplicates. How do you handle ordering for your inventory? Do you want to include purchase orders when calculating quantity available? In other words, if I have five of an item on hand and I have an outstanding purchase order that I'm going to purchase 10, do I want my inventory to show that I have five 
or 15. As you can see, this can make a really big difference on what you think you have to sell. We also can have a variety of settings having to do with our invoices and our out-of-stock messages. Do you want to be warned of those things? Do you not want to be warned at all? Or if it's out of stock based on the quantity available or the quantity on hand? This again depends on your ordering and if you're including purchase orders. We of course have our general ledger accounts and our costing, what we're going to use for taxes and shipping, custom fields, and then price levels. I'm not going to take the time to change all of these, but I did want to show you how we could work with some of the things like taxes and shipping. When we work with item tax types on the left, we have regular, and that's the only one that's currently selected. We also could click and say, we also want to show exempt items. Maybe you sometimes sell to wholesalers, or maybe in your state you don't charge tax. Then you see that it says exempt several more times. You can actually have up to 10 different types of taxes. Depending on your location, you may need all of those. Likewise, on the right-hand side, we have different shipping methods. Airborne, courier, hand deliver, customer pickup, all of these are available, but you may not want all of them. For example, maybe we don't offer a courier. Well, I can simply type over these. So let me go ahead and just rearrange this list a little bit. Perhaps the number one way that we send things is FedEx, so I want that to be number one. I can then put in different types of FedEx that we have, like next day or overnight. Maybe the second way that we use it is using actually U.S. mail. But again, we have priority, and let's call it parcel post. We'll do just one more here. Let's say that another way that we have is for people to actually pick it up. I can then come down and simply delete any additional spaces that I don't need. This will be used for the shipping on our invoices, and field number one will be the default, so you want that usually to be the number one way that people will be receiving their items or their services from you. I just wanted to point out that in this particular screen, the last tab is price levels. I can add price levels. For example, I could do corporate, and I could do retail, or government, wholesale, those types of things. But also remember in Peachtree Pro, we don't actually get to calculate the price levels. These would show up on the invoice, but they won't be calculated for us. If you have any of the higher versions, then what you'll see on the right hand side is a field that lets you determine how that should be calculated. For example, wholesale might be 12% below your cost or 12% above your cost. The important thing to remember is that even though you can type in price levels here and have them available on your invoices, you would still have to do the calculation yourself if you were using the Pro version. Those are the only two places we have to go as far as this particular chapter is concerned, so I'm going to say OK. And we know that our defaults for both our vendors and our inventory items are set and ready to go.